Good morning, everybody, and this is another beautiful Michigan morning, kind of grayish, rainy, perfect moment to make another video. Today's topic, how can we use photography and very quickly create a one point, two point and three point sketch overlay of an existing space. Now, why would I use actually a photo to sketch over and not start actually from scratch? Isn't that cheating? No, not necessarily. Think about it. Why do we do actually a sketch? The sketch is meant to capture a space. For example, here looks pretty cool. We can see everything. The curtain wall in the background, the carpet, the wooden floor, fabric, couch, plants. But this is a drawing that actually takes quite some time to do. Same with this one. This is also, by the way, kind of like a, a one point. This is a beautiful two point perspective. And creating these drawings um, takes time. And when you meet with a client, you don't have that time. What's also the purpose of making a quick sketch when you meet with a client? Ideally, it's not about making a beautiful drawing. It is about when we take a look at an existing space for example, like this, how could we renovate it? When I take a photo first, I capture actually all the details. So I don't have to memorize it. It's captured, burnt into the image. And by sketching over it, while talking with the client, I can make this drawing also very informative, easy to read. So again, this is actually more effective working. I'm simply using the image and the perspective one point, two point, or three point view that is provided by the image to assist me more accurately, quickly putting down lines so I could with the client explore design ideas. I find actually, while I learned all these techniques myself, doing for example, a rendering with a marker or here, this is also quite nice. This is actually beautiful, very enjoyable to do. It's just very time consuming. And maybe this is something now 2020 and onwards, I simply do via 3D renderings. Technology moved on. I still think, however, that actually a, a quick sketch and marker, for example, like in this view, is still very usable. You see, everything is very simplified. The sketches are kind of cricket, not precise, but there is enough amount of information that really helps me understand what is going on. Here, when you talk with this, um, with a client, you really think about what's going on here in terms of interior space design. Here, much more, I really pay attention to how amazing is actually this drawing done. This is actually the realism in this drawing is is actually distracting my point of view. And to bring this introduction to an end, here's also a, a photo of, sorry, an image of how, for example, a two point perspective exterior could be created. Left point, right point, the vanishing points, center line. Perspectively, this is correct, but the problem there is how can I figure out a natural perspective for shortening? For example, when the vanishing points get closer together, then the image will look kind of squeezed. And when I put the vanishing points further apart, then actually the, um, the architectural drawing will look more stretched. Further, when I put down the time to draw something like this. What is really frustrating that maybe at one point you start running out of space or you notice a particular element of the space you can't really put into the drawing because it will look distorted because of the rules of one point or two point perspective drawing. You see that was a two point, like a one point. There's not really much you see in the foreground. You notice here, for example, everything is more in the back. There's a lot of the foreground but somewhat this image, things feel a little bit um, kind of distant. 
And to overcome that issue and to prevent that you spent a lot of time on the drawing, which later then is incorrect and you have to re redo it, I find it very practical to study actually how one point, two point or three point perspective views should look inside an interior space by simply taking a photo. And then all the architectural lines we will use to retrace the perspective grid. And with that said, let's do that. These three reference photos are provided as a download link inside the description for this video. So please go ahead, download the images, put them into iCloud so you can easily access them directly on your iPad. And we will bring those into Sketchbook. Sketchbook is a free sketching application. It is very powerful. Other very popular is uh, actually Procreate. I still really like Sketchbook because of its simplicity and the way how this works. And of course, for our students, really good. It's free. Okay. So to bring a photo into Sketchbook, one very easy way is we start Sketchbook, go to the preferences upper left corner, click new sketch, presets, and then here I will use the screen resolution, create, very good. Then I can swipe up, go to the uh, file app, and then with one finger, I tap and hold till actually the kitchen wall one point image is selected, drag it away. So now I'm actually moving this image with a thumb, I swipe up, go to sketchbook, tap it or tap the icon and release my finger. I can zoom out a little bit. There it is. Click done. Good. So here, actually, I, I made the image a little bit too small. So let's do this one more time. I can delete actually this layer. So you see, it's actually a pretty, pretty quick process. And then with two fingers uh, pinching, I can scale it. With two fingers rotating, I can rotate it. And obviously all what we want is to make this um, not rotated, just scaled. And with one finger, we can move this around and position it. Another way to bring in actually an image is you go to the preferences, files, now down save, we bring this image in, sketch overlays. There's the image I tapped onto it. There we are, very good. Okay, so there you see, I positioned it. Good, so then we will lower the opacity and let's lock this layer. So we can't really by accident sketch on it. On the upper right corner, we click on the plus in the layer menu to add a new layer. Then I will switch to my ink pen. And in this exercise, we will practice how can we redesign actually this area here and correct some of the architectural and annoying details. And again, we try to do something that's rather fast. So we, while talking with the client, the drawing does not have to be a Michelangelo that goes into a museum but it needs to be precise to a certain degree. The beauty actually of doing this digitally is that we can work with layers. When we do this on paper, a line is put down. We can erase it, but you see that you tried to erase it. We can put thin lines down and thick lines, which actually also has its charm, but at one point it can get really confusing when you have too many lines. So let's make two layers here. One layer I will use as an underlay and one layer I will use as, well, where I sketch my stuff. So I will tap with one uh, finger onto the color puck, upper right corner. If you don't see this color puck down here, the double puck, you can turn on there. I will make this red so I see the line. What uh, size do I have here? Yeah, this looks pretty good. 
very nice. Let's go back. I will tap onto the icon up here and have the line tool active. And now I will actually go ahead and try to trace some of the architectural elements because what I need to find first is actually the vanishing point. And I start drawing somewhere there, for example, there's one line here. I start drawing at that corner and then I line up the dash line with the marble part there. And where these two lines meet, that's pretty much where my vanishing point is. And you see now we can literally now take any architectural element here, since the space was built with 90 degrees, and everything will match. Perfect. Cool. So I will actually remove this. This is just what I need. Cool. I will turn this off for the moment. And I will talk about what I want to change. This overhang here I find terrible. Same here, I would like to make this more aligned. Also, well, maybe that had a purpose. This overhang here I dislike too. Plus, why do why are these two at two different heights? I'm also a tall person. So we would like to customize everything to my body height. So how do we quickly sketch this out? We have actually created our perspective grid. So that's pretty good. In one point perspective, vertical lines are vertical, horizontal lines are horizontal, and then the rest goes to the vanishing point. That makes actually this type of sketching very, very easy. If I want, I can make use of the ruler. And you see here's the ruler with two fingers going onto it. I can rotate it. And there's also an angle readout. Or I go to 90 degrees, then this is vertical. So let's say here I start in this area. Very nice. So I, oh, I need to go into that layer. I start sketching a new element down there. This is, for example, the new edge I would like. And then I could go to the horizontal part and where these two lines meet. Okay, this goes over there. And you see now how I'm actually drawing this line a little bit longer because I don't really know how and where on the right side actually does this uh, countertop end. You see here, this corner I need to move up because this is actually a little bit lower. Okay, good. So how do we do this? I have the left edge. Now I need to figure out where is the right edge. I do actually know where in the back this ends and there's another horizontal line. And then at one point it will meet kind of like this point there. And then from the vanishing point, I can shoot the line through. Okay, good. And let's do that. So I turn on again my grid here or the layer with the, the vanishing point behind. You see, that's the reason why it's so useful. Turn on my ruler, go to kind of like where this should be there and then draw a line. Cool. Okay. Here's roughly the end. Again, make sure the lines are nice and straight. There we are. It's not to rotate the image and then I'm lining up now the ruler with the vanishing point. And this line I marked. And then I start sketching the one edge there. So that's actually how, um, how white this would hang over. Then let's put down the thickness as a line. There is 
this corner and you see how I do little scribbles down make lines like perfectly clean I'm also so far drawing everything just with the ruler, which works out. But you see actually that it is a little bit time consuming. It takes time to do, no? Okay, so for the rest, I will not use the, the ruler. So you can see how fast drawing really can be. I will for this, however, turn on the line tool. This helps me really a lot. That's pretty good, good. Let's turn this on. There we are. I will actually make one more layer. And with a finger, I tap on the layer and drag it down. And then I will from here draw myself a line to there. Good. So the reason why I did this was this way I can figure out when I draw a line here straight up, where is this thing? So where it meets. Cool. Okay. So can go to here and then simply retrace these lines as needed. There. Okay. Now I can go over, push it to there. I can go straight up. Actually, I will simply go from here, use the um, the edge of the cabinet to kind of like get my vertical line, there's a little bit of an offset. Very good. This goes further down, this goes over. And there you see how fast we're starting to block everything out. So this is probably down here, there, there. Bring this over. And this line was a little bit too crooked. Let's correct this. There, cool. Maybe a few more lines to make the space look more complete. This is not a matter of trying to retrace everything as closely as possible, but simply to put in enough lines. So when we see the sketch, we can understand what's going on there. And there you see, you know, actually increasing you know, my drawing speed and just very quickly blocking the stuff out. So. Also, this is a really big tip about how can I make my drawings, my sketches look good. You need not necessarily to be a talented drawer, but you need to have a little bit of patience and put in a sufficient amount of lines. Then if actually the, the lines are kind of cricket, it's okay. As long as the idea is not to make a correct drawing, so like a photorealistic rendering, but more like a sketch, line quality is less important. Line quantity is more important. Because the more you put in, the less empty the drawing looks. And that is actually something we react to. There. So this is just a very quick sketch. I mean, there's obviously more stuff I could do, but with this step, I already finished kind of like drawing or not drawing, explaining the purpose of this type of a drawing. And you see how easy it was to retrace the vanishing point and then use the line or the ruler tool to very quickly recreate an interior kind of like a concept for how would the space actually look like when uh, we would have the work surface on the table just as one piece. Instead of having this silly step, we could also continue. Well, this, the client want maybe this backsplash. I really hate those. So I drew this actually into that layer, but let's say now we want to do design variations. Okay, so 
let's make a new layer. So in onto this layer, I will zoom in here a little bit and trace this out there. I'm just trying to make sure these lines are somewhat parallel. Angling this line a little bit. There we are. Very good. So now when we meet with the person, we could say, look, this is actually with the backsplash or we remove it. So we can use the layers to actually have design variations on it. I could also have drawn everything on one layer with the um, no. Okay, let's go to here, new layer. I could have drawn one layer kind of like this way in there, and then have one new layer where I put everything in kind of like as one piece. And then when you talk with the person, you can turn on and off. And this is a very effective way to capture different ideas and very quickly switch between them. So the next drawing will be this kitchen island. This is three point perspective. Three point is actually the most labor intensive one, which is also the reason why I don't use it as much when constructing by hand. But kind of like in this case, when trying to redesign this kitchen island, the kitchen island is it's kind of like a cube. So this is actually not very complicated to do. In sketchbook, I already created a new image and I uh, scaled down a little bit uh, here one more time, make a new image this way, scale out so I can see where the image will be placed and then finger drag, go to sketchbook and plop it in there. Same process then we will lower the opacity, lock the layer and then we bring this down. Then I will now recreate the perspective grid. I have the pencil, the uh, well, pen, here's my guideline. And I can zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. And I will try to line this up here on top and then draw a line. Very good. Maybe since I'm down here, let's do this line. And there, very nice. And there, cool. Try to really be precise. And there, I'm just drawing this over. These guidelines can actually touch each other. It's totally fine. This will actually be very useful because these corners of the marble corner top are rounded. And by drawing these lines over each other, we retrace the actual yeah, square slab there. Cool. OK, good. So we can turn this off. There's the erase tool. Let's erase this. Uh, I will do two more lines. Since we are here, let's do this. I'm rotating the ruler, by the way, with two hands and two fingers. I find this a tick easier than just one hand and two fingers. And there we are. Really good. Okay, so we can clearly see that the vanishing points left, right and bottom are really far away outside of the, the drawing area, which might look problematic, but we have actually clean reference lines to approximate how all the other lines need to rotate. So the sketch will look like three point perspective. Before we continue, let's go ahead and lower the transparency or opacity of this layer here. So when I sketch over it, the um, I see more where I'm drawing. So let's make a new layer. Then let's turn on the line tool. And my first task will be 
I will retrace all these straight edges. Because the marble slab is the most expensive part, that is definitely not a piece I'm going to replace. Then let's turn off the line tool, turn on the predictive stroke. What this can be very useful for is drawing ellipses, but when you draw curves, it smooths it out a little bit. And the higher the level, sometimes the better it does it. Cool. Okay. Here, this is a very uh, small arc. I'm actually drawing on the line, then I go to the line and then I stop. This way I can hide my start and end points and by drawing this way, um, how could I say that? It's also, I'm already drawing, I'm fluid in my motion and then it's much easier to make this arc. One mistake very often I see when people try to draw an ellipse they try to draw it this way. And then you get these really sharp corner points. The trick here is you start inside and go this way. Because then that's the way how, as you can see, how the ellipse there and there goes down into this line. Okay, good. So back, 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 back. We will start on this line and zip. And this really needs to be drawn out of your arm. You do not move your your hand wrist. Cool. Okay. Here's the last one. I like drawing my arcs more this way. It's easier. And also a fair amount of speed is really good for drawing these lines or arcs and then there's the last one this is actually quite interesting it goes and zip and this one here zip and there cool yeah is this 100 percent correct no not really but it's fine this is again just a sketch to talk about design ideas. So the tabletop is kind of not, not a tabletop. The kitchen island marble slab is done. So I will make a new layer. So I don't have to mess with this. Again, uh, by making new layers, I could on each layer, put down a new design variation. So what we in this exercise want to try out, we want to make this massive kitchen island look actually visually lighter by opening up this um, area down here. Cool. Okay, so to do this, let's switch to the line tool. And we will follow some of these lines here. Very good. Okay. Then I have here a line that goes in, okay. And now here's actually the trick. How do I draw a line on the left and the right side? So it really feels like it is following the perspective, um, yeah, for shortening. Now you see everything goes down here to the vanishing point at the bottom. And there's a little trick now to do. Technically speaking, Somewhere down there is the point and I you can see I can start drawing from outside of the the image if I want to. I might actually uh, I'm kind of like tr trying to find it. Yeah, no, this was actually too high. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. So you see this way actually it worked out. So I start tracing it from the outside. Here actually this might be really 
low. Yeah, this actually is getting closer, oh, a little bit to the left. No, <laughs> needs to be even further down. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> okay, now we could do it this way if we want. Um, but it would be, as you can see, a little bit obnoxious to try out. So the um, other way is the the more I draw a line closer to this line, the more it can be parallel to it. The more I draw it to here, it really needs to show the, the opposite. And a good exercise is I, I draw this one down here and there, and then I try to draw a line that's in the center and maybe a line there. And I, as you can see, I try to rotate these lines and fan them a little bit. So I need to trust a little bit my my judgment. So it can't be 100% parallel, but it can be a little bit rotated. This is too close. So here it's parallel and a little bit wider on top. Cool, okay. Then we have a horizontal line in there pretty much it's the same i'm just drawing this midline in here and trying to see now uh, how does this look so that seems to be okay and i'm drawing this line here now is this okay yeah this might be good now obviously this line is wrong maybe a little bit higher to the right side it can get a little bit lower because there is the foreshortening happening this is maybe a, a tick too much there cool okay yeah let's clean up everything a little bit i will remove actually these lines there or it's up to you if you want to keep these lines in it and then later when we're done, we delete them or we even put those onto a different layer. I should maybe have put them onto a different layer. Good, okay, anyway. So the thing left to do is I need to draw a line here and then I need to figure out where is the, the back vertical line. And that's actually super easy. So let's turn on the grid again. I will go to the line tool, start drawing from here. And now I'm trying to figure out what seems to work really good. Maybe something like this seems good. And now I'm paying attention to where does this dashed line cut the red line next to the um, bar stool. And that is actually here. Cool, okay. Now, when I go from here into this vanishing point, there we can roughly see where this is. Now let's draw this line. Does this look good? Let me actually draw here this line up, maybe a little bit rotated. Yeah, that actually looks believable. Good, so I'm memorizing these points. So from here now I'm retracing this line a little bit straight up. And then from here, now this is actually incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because this is smaller and this is bigger. That's not the way how this can be. It has to be more like this. Okay, so this is maybe a case where let's put a line onto another uh, layer. So these lines are parallel, it needs to be to the left side, it needs to get smaller, roughly there, very good. Then I draw this line in, very nice. And then to the 
to the right side actually it can get up. So maybe like this. Yeah, cool. And I mean, we can use the eraser. And erase everything. Very careful. We can keep some elements left. Don't clean it up too much. It can be nice to have these artifacts actually left on the drawing. Yeah, and there you see it. No, we actually created a new design, kind of like with the base being more open. Now this is actually, now we have to think about when I'm sitting on this bar stool, can my legs really go under it? So my kneecaps properly will hit this front area. So then, then we could say, good, okay. Well, let's make a quick new sketch and we then simply will see, well, how does this all look when we just go ahead and make this a nice massive side. And maybe there's something inside that keeps these two parts together. Cool, there. Now you see, um, what? Oh, wrong layer. Sketching is really easy when you work smart. Now with all the stuff in the background, so if we, let's say, hide this. Um, yeah, now it's just a kitchen island. It might be good to have a very quick um, detail of the kitchen space too. There we are. And now I will block just the basic elements out. So the person understands where we are or what's actually in the background. I'm trying to be very fast now. The lines are a little bit cricket. So please understand that. And again, also here, the more lines we put in, not necessarily meaning beautiful drawings, but maybe elements that help us to understand what's going on here the more actually this drawing will be useful. So no, this is actually very distracting, but look, if we lower the opacity, then, ah, okay, it's inside this space. And by the contrast, I'm guiding the eye to the front part. Okay, so that's actually how easy it is to recreate also something in um, three-point perspective, sketching over a photo. And this is a good showcase to, to show how easy that is. Also, because of three-point perspective, doing this on paper uses more drawing space or needs more drawing space. So doing it this way is much more effective. And you can do this on a small device, portable iPad. Let's also save this one. We go to the menu and then save to the gallery. Very nice. Oh, and there. In the gallery, we have all the drawings. My daughter's first one. She loves sketching on the iPad. Then, new sketch. Thank you. We zoom out and to the last, this two point perspective. Now, a uh, little tip about why or how I made this photo. So, we would like to sketch something. Um, kind of cleaning up a little bit the design of the kitchen. And to recreate the perspective grid, we ideally really want to see 
the um, how could I say that as much as architectural elements as possible. And with architectural elements, I'm primarily talk about this line, this line, here's a line, there's a line, there's a line. Even while I'm primarily focusing myself later on this, which you can see in the image is actually the smallest part. The rest of the image really helps, however, to find or to guide me. And by the way, how this was um, photographed, I also at least have the base of my kitchen island too. This is still 90 degrees. It's maybe maybe a little bit less, so it's it started to to look actually a little bit distorted, which is why I stepped further away when actually making this photo instead of getting closer to the kitchen. But the nice thing is, a sketch I can also scale up, and everything that's surrounding the kitchen area I can crop out. Cool. Okay, so here again finger onto it and then we will drag it. One stipend allows me to do that. Thank you. There we are. Cool. Same chess. And let's drag this one down or we drag this one up and zoom in a little bit. Make sure this is not rotated. There we are. In this exercise, I will now show you how we can actually set up a perspective grid. Sketchbook has one point, two point, and three point perspective grids. But to set these up, we need to find actually the vanishing points. Okay, so let's turn this off for the moment. Turn on actually our um, line tool, make a layer, and then I will very carefully just try to draw lines. And it's really important that I'm not rushing this. Everything that I'm rushing here might result into an incorrect vanishing point. And you can see all these lines which I'm tracing here are indeed lining up there. Zip. Cool. Let's do maybe this wall. And yeah, okay. I think we found actually the right vanishing point. Now we need to do the same with the left one. Now there it will be a little bit tricky because you can see, uh, yeah, we are running here out of space. But that's okay. There are ways to make it work. Trust me, I have you covered. Okay, cool. So there we are. I will lower this a little bit. Um, so, one little check. I have my ruler here. So this is 90 degrees. And I want to see is this door vertical, this sidewall vertical, this line vertical, this vertical, this vertical. Yeah, everything is vertical. So why did I check this? This means that actually now my horizontal line will be perpendicular to vertical lines, aka, and this is my horizon line there. And would I have loved having these tools when I was a student. Good you have me. So this line which I created, the horizon line, I have my right vanishing point and somewhere on this line, uh, well, outside the gray, or inside the gray area, outside the image, on the left side, there will be the vanishing point. Cool. So new layer, perspective um, grid. So now here, this point, this is my right vanishing point. I position onto there. This is my left vanishing point. And now, yeah, I don't really know where this will be. So I need to do some test lines. 
first. Does this line up? Yeah, look at that. It lines up pretty, pretty good. What about the lines actually that go to the left vanishing point? So let's try this out. I draw along the marble part. Oh, that's actually pretty close. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised. Let's clear this. I will move this over just a little bit more and then from the bottom try to draw a line. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is very good. So perfect. We use the photo and then um, a sketch overlay for finding kind of like some vanishing lines and approximating the vanishing points. And then we use that to put the perspective grid over it. Cool. Okay, so all this stuff we can now remove. We don't need any guidelines because the perspective grid is doing that actually for us. Okay, so in this uh, design what we will try to focus on is trying to make a very quick sketch overlay trying to adjust some of the cabinet design uh, and making things a little bit more clean so i will start by putting down a line here then i put a line up and I'll go a little bit higher. Actually, hold on. Uh, I will go. Uh, I'll go till there, and then here we need to have the um, toe kick. This goes up there. Very good. So probably that's where it ends, and then I can from this line draw back. And then where these two lines meet in the back, that is not really where the end is. Cool. Okay. I will draw everything on purpose a little bit flush so you can kind of like see what I'm doing. So I'll bring this over. This is now actually the countertop. Maybe this was a tick too thick. So one line thinner, then I can go ahead and erase this. By making the eraser uh, nice and small, it's actually easy to to remove tiny elements. If it's too big, then it's, as you can see, too much of an erase. And let's go back to this tool. Then here, maybe on top, I bring this back. I bring this back. Very nice. And then here, I bring this back. Cool. So backsplash. Okay, we will have a backsplash, very nice. But this will actually be just a tiled surface. We will have the, the marble countertop, but then we don't have this marble strip. And then the tile on the wall, it just will be one big surface, cool. Okay, then we can, if you want, continue drawing this a little bit up. Here is a line that comes down. Oh, wow, this is actually, I ended this really perfectly. Very good. And let's remove this a little bit there. You see on purpose, I'm not trying to clean everything up too much. Then, yeah, what is the, the height or the depth? So there is kind of like an idea of how, how deep this might be. Um, so I'm bringing this over from here. Let's see from where we have to actually do this there and there. And the, see, this actually looked kind of wrong because I did the line a little bit too short there. 
just the thickness of a stroke can make actually, I'm talking about this line, can make this too thin. So let me go back so you can see the problem I had there. Oh, oh my, my undo and redo actually erased this. But if you go back in the video, you will see that actually it was too short. But again, this is the cool part of working this way. And then let's turn back on the perspective grid. Bring this over there. Down. Suck. Suck where these two then meet. This is where the end is. There. Thank you. Uh, this is really correct. Yep, yeah, that is correct. Then this line I continue there. Thank you. The direction is actually important so that the software understands what are we doing here. I'm continue drawing this drawing this line and then where these two lines meet, that is then where I want to have this new corner and look how everything there perfectly matches up. Isn't that cool? I think so. There, cool. Okay, maybe a little bit of a quick um, architectural detailing. There is the window frame. Windows also have a thickness. Sometimes we need to zoom in to draw actually really thin lines. And here a little bit of an eraser just to move this part away. Sometimes then it's also easier to turn the grid on off. Yeah, and you see now this is actually quite, quite easy. There, maybe some lines there further than we can put in the kitchen island, this time actually in one point perspective, uh, sorry, two point perspective, doing all the stuff for me. Look how easy that is. But that's two point perspective. That's the beauty behind it. I mean, you could also have set up the three point perspective, but it was good exercise to understand how does sketching work because one thing is only if you only know how to use the guides and then you have to do this by hand uh, yeah you will crash and burn so it's it's good to still know all these manual techniques by hand too boom look at that here this goes over for example there we would like to do a nice redesign of this upper space here. So there is the fridge. So we will have a small uh, wooden board there and there. And hey, you know what, why don't we just open this area? And this is kind of like what I'm talking about when you meet with a client and say, hmm, there's a, an opportunity to do something interesting. Let's maybe frame this. So it's a nice box. Here is the back line. There, suck. There, this goes down. This is then over the fridge. So it's kind of like a shelf system. And then sticking out, there is our fridge. American built size. That's our, our fridges are smaller in Europe, which is why we go more shopping. among other reasons why we do that. Fresh produce is also good. We have markets more. Good, maybe here's some 
last quick lines to just give an idea of where we are, nothing too complicated or detailed. Let's turn this off, look at that. No? Um, you can see actually with this sketching tool, it was very easy to block things out and put it uh, into it. And uh, by using the photo, we really know when we uh, do these drawings perspectively, that's actually correct. Okay, very good. That's then uh, the last drawing I wanted to show you. Two point perspective in sketchbook by doing an overlay over an image. As a closing argument, maybe let's talk a bit for a moment about why should we still learn something like this in the time of 3D modeling, which is getting better and better and better. And I myself are a huge um, proponent of 3D modeling in CAD because I feel like it's the natural evolution from everything what we did in previous generations by hand. However, there are two reasons or really two important points to be aware of why sketching is still very valuable in today's time. First, that's the one I already talked about. When you are there with a client, you can take a photo and then, as you can see, you can plop down the perspective grid and sketch over it while talking with the client. That's very fluid, very engaging, very interactive. The client feels like they are part of the discussion. I think for SketchUp, you can do maybe something in a similar way or maybe even speed, but maybe not as, um, yeah, how could I say that? dynamic. The another aspect really is also that's very true, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, based on how you want to see this, if a client sees that you can sketch, they will respect you more. It wows them when somebody can draw. Even when actually this is uh, using a software to help us putting down the perspective lines. They, st they don't know how to do this, they can't do it. So they appreciate people who can do. So it makes you look actually more skilled. The other, this is maybe more a psychological and also marketing uh, tip. When you show them a sketch, by nature, a sketch is very loose. So they have to put in a lot of their imagination into it. If you show them a flashed out cat model, or even worse, a photorealistic rendering, they think, oh great, the design work is done. So finished job while you just started. So that's another reason why you don't want to show them actually too precise uh, visuals at the beginning or in between, but more at the end, just to prevent them thinking that the job is done. We as designers communicate at levels differently than a client might actually um, yeah, read it or understand. Okay, with all that done, that's definitely now really everything.